How does a pile of plywood end up looking something like this? This video will be the whole build process from start to finish. Okay, so I built my first cockpit a couple of years ago and it was a really nice setup. But while building it and playing with it, I learned a lot of new things. And considering I actually really enjoy building this stuff, I decided that I'm going to build a new one and take what I learned and make it better. So last summer I started building new cockpit from plywood and it took me about six months to finish the whole build. This video will be the whole build process from start to finished product like this. And if you're interested in the details, each section of this video has actually corresponding separate standalone video where I go into much details of what I'm building and why, not, why I'm building it. So let's get started and I hope you enjoy. I started the project by making a basic 3D model of my cockpit in Fusion 360 with few variations. And this model is actually available for you to download from my website for free. Just want to mention I did make some changes on the fly. First I started working with the base plates that will be under me. The one under my feet will be actually lying on the floor, so in this case I used just basic butt joints since there won't be too much stress on those joints. The part under the chair is going to have casters underneath, so in this case I decided to use half lap joints just for the added strength. So after finding the exact center point, I added my miter saw to the right height, made one accurate cut and then just started chopping wood off and use some sort of face mask in this case because there will be a lot of dust unless you have really good dust extraction systems which I didn't have. And after drilling a couple of holes and a lot of cleaning I took out my silicone brush which is great with glue and started assembling the whole thing. In this case the screws are mostly there to just keep everything in place until the glue has dried so I can continue working with the thing. And in this case I also decided to add one extra support to where the chair is going to be attached just to make sure everything stays together. For the base plate I actually decided to use some chip wood that I had left over from my previous project because it's enough and this way I'm going to save my plywood. And this drag show is something I'm going to be using a lot in this project. After a quick assembly I also added a few casters underneath the, this chair part. And here I also made a major mistake that I'll need to fix in the future. So that's something you're going to see a bit later. But once this part was done it was time to move on the front panels. Here I quickly realized that I'm going to need some sort of workstations when I'm working with the seats. And while the IKEA table legs are not too sturdy, it got me through the project. A major part of this project was basically measuring everything precisely, ripping the seats with my track saw, then measuring again and cutting smaller pieces, and then cutting again and again and again. I also used the track saw to add grooves slash dados to the bottom pieces. On the hind side, a hand rotor would have been a much better tool for this part, so I ended up doing some chiseling, but I kind of felt a bit unsure with the hand, hand rotor at, the, at this point. Besides glue, I decided to use pocket holes with these joints so I could continue working right away. And I also added these small pieces to the corners just to make sure everything was perfectly squared. At this point I decided to cut away the hole where I would attach the verbal control panels a bit later and after that was done again back with the assembly and attaching the final panels to the front panel setup. And just to make my life easier I decided to attach these small pieces separately. So the basic structure of the front panels was done and I would come back to the details a bit later but now it was time to continue working with the side cabinets and this was the most challenging part of this whole build. First thing I actually did here was cut a lot of small triangles and I'm actually going to show you a bit later where I'm going to use them. 
And after the drying holes, it was actually time to start working with the cabinet. So again, first I actually had to combine, combine the track saw to make a longer one, so I could grip the longer seat. Then started cutting the smaller pieces. And at the end, because I decided to make things a bit more difficult for myself, because it's still going to look a lot nicer, I had to cut the small angle at the end. I wanted to have angled side panels in this setup, and it's going to be a nice detail, but a bit more challenging to build. But this was the best moment to cut the holes underneath the side panels so I can easily route the cables. So after some careful measurement, it was time to first drill some holes, and then using my jigsaw, just cut the rest of the hole. And I'm going to make another hole, a bit longer one, to the top plate. And this is for the motorarity that I'm actually going to be explaining a bit later. But since this is going to be visible, I really need to make sure that this is going to look nice. So in this case, the track saw is a really great tool for cutting this sort of holes. And I can easily finish just the last few centimeters with my jigsaw. And after all the parts for the side cabinets were ready, it was time first to drill a lot of pocket holes and then just start to continue, continue with assembly. And part of these triangles I cut at the beginning I used here just to make sure everything squared and just to add extra strength. This was actually quite a tricky part, but I managed to pull it off. These are the great moments of any build project when things are actually starting to look as they are in your plans. After moving my workstation, it was time to continue with the inner panels. Here I also added the maintenance hats so I could access the insides of the cabinet easily since they are going to house a lot of wires and stuff going to the panels. So again, cutting the hole with the track saw and finishing with jigsaw. And in this case, I'm actually just going to attach this with glue and nail guns since this is the faster way and also, this is actually enough in this case, since the pressure or the weight is going to come from above. At this point, I also figured out that this would be a perfect moment to fill in the pocket holes that I had everywhere. And at this place, I'm not even trying to make it pretty. That's for the finalizing. Just kind of trying to fill those, fill those holes with something. And then back to the cabinets. At this point I also decided to add the insides for these screws that I have on both sides for the motor parts. The idea of these side grooves or perhaps channels is that I can have different kind of controllers for different games. So for example in this case I might have the holes set up for space simulators with the left joystick and when I want to change in the flight simulators, I can just take the left joystick off and bring the throttle forward. And this way I can naturally play flight simulators with the same setup. And finally, I added some extra support to the side cabinets because in the end I have two small children. So this needs to be able to take the weight of the children jumping on it. Even if it's something that shouldn't ever happen. And now the side cabinets were ready, it was time to move on with the project and start finalizing the front panels. And here's the access hats to the inside. A lot of small stuff at this phase like cutting holes for cables and building attachments so I could attach these parts together and take it apart and then reattach later. The last large sheet of plywood I saved to be under the chair. And in this case I just cut a suitable piece out of it, then measured the exact positions for the grooves where the casters would be running, and this time used my hand rotor to cut those grooves away. Also, some corner routing for the section that would be visible from behind the cockpit. 
Then it was time to start fixing the big mistake I made. Mainly, the base plate was as wide as the space between the cabinets, which means it would be scraping to the side of the cabinets all the time. So I had to take some wood away from the sides. Again, first with my track saw, but since that wasn't enough, I had to use other tools like the multi-tool and my sander. At this point I also started trying DCS out and first thing I noticed that the dashboard display I had in my previous cockpit simply wasn't tall enough for DCS for Hornet dashboard. So I bought the basically the cheapest 27 inch display I was able to find and attached it in its place. But the thing here is that measurements were for the narrower display so I had to add some extra things again into the cockpit. In the spoiler this was a bit too high so once I'll assemble everything I'm just going to notice that I'm still going to need to make some changes. Here I also added some small strips of wood where I can attach the game specific overlays that I'm going to build later. As an extra detail I decided to add some shades or glare shields to the front panel and I'm just using four middle 4mm plywood that I just happen to have lying around, first cutting them to the right size and using a steam cleaner to bend them and attaching them into place with clamps until it actually dries completely and it should keep the, keep the shape, the bend shape and it's just looking a bit nicer. Now that the front panels are pretty much ready and I'm just gonna trying out them with the screens of the front dashboard here it's time to move on finalizing the side cabinets and again a lot of small and interesting details. This phase is going to start with perhaps the most challenging part of this build, the angled side panels because there isn't a single right angle in the whole panel. So first I'm just going to attach these triangles in this place, this was something I actually cut earlier and these are going to support the side panel. Then just a lot of measuring and careful cuts with my track saw, which is surprisingly accurate while cutting even angled cuts. One of the sides had so steep angle that I couldn't cut it with my track saw, so I had to use my table saw and some creativity to get the exactly right angle for that side. That's good enough. And to attach the side panels, I first drilled some holes for bolts and then added just some threaded inserts to the triangles with some help from epoxy. While the side panels are basically permanent part of this setup, I'm still planning to take them off when I need to add new panels or new stuff to the side panels. Then it was time to start working with the small details again, like adding some skids underneath the side cabinets. They were basically part of the design, part of the height. Just adding them in place with, the, with some glue and nails. And also adding creams around the side cabinets because this is really crucial detail in making the setup look much nicer. First I'm just attaching them to the right place, just cutting, cutting them to the right size and making the angles perfect. And then I'm taking a rotor with rotor table and adding a crew inside just to lower them one centimeter. And also adding a crew inside where I can later add the lead strip. For the inside crew I ended up using my table saw in this case, uh, it just made better results. And since we're not allowed dado plates here in Finland or in the EU area for some reason, I just had to make multiple passes for each of these strip pieces. And finally rounding the corners and also just drilling a few holes to add that with the screws. I ended up gluing just the butts together, so in this case I used some cleanse film just to make sure it wouldn't get glued to the cockpit itself because I 
still I'm still going to need to take it off at least for the painting. Then few more important details like the actual modules that I can drop in the slots on the sides. And this is just basically I'm going using using the 21 mm plywood that I had lying around and just gluing and nailing it in its place. And once it was ready, I could just drop it in place for the future panel designs. And as final thing, I basically built the center console. That again is something that where I can switch the switch the panel for different games and drill in a couple of holes. One important for the cup holder and then just adding this final small piece. Once the basic structure of the cockpit was ready, it was time to start painting it. Before starting the painting, the first thing for me to do was basically take the whole cockpit apart. First, I went through all the major scratches and holes and gaps and everything like that with the wood filler before doing anything else. And after I was done with that, it was time for sanding. And this is a phase that there will be a lot of sanding. The second step, I went through all the surfaces with this universal filler, hoping to basically hide most of the wood grain. And then again, some more sanding. After base coat and quick sanding with the fine grit paper, it was time for the paint. And some, some of the areas got two coats of the gray paint that I decided to use for most of the cockpit. And on few occasions, I also used black paint just to create some contrast. And after the paint had dried, I started attaching the trims in place. And also, since I just happened to have this warning tape lying around, I figured out it would make a nice extra detail for the cockpit. For the assembly, I got some, I guess, extra help from my son here. And just adding some extra nice details here. And while I was done with that one, it was time to get my laser engraver and one really important detail. After painting, things really started looking really good and then it was time to start playing with electricity. For the lighting, I'm using a second-hand computer PSU that I picked up for 20 euros, a breakout board for the PSUs, LED dimmer and LEDs. And if you want to get some more details about this setup, you really should watch the episode. My basic process for panel design, like this lighting panel, is that I start with Fusion 360 and design the basic panel with the holes for LEDs behind it. Then I'm actually printing it in white PLA. This is important for the lighting. After printing it, I designed the markings and using light burn and my laser engraver, I engraved the markings in the panel that has been spray painted black. And this way I will get the markings to come true as white, but also they are transcluent, so when I turn the lights on, I actually see them lit. And after cutting a hole for the lighting control panel, it was time to just adding the LEDs in place and started soldering. And there was a lot of soldering to do in this phase.
One of the nice things with this build is when things actually fall in place and look exactly as you wish them to look. Finally, it was time to attach the panel in its place and attach the side panel in its right place. And after I was done setting all the wiring corrected for this one, I also attached the LED strips under the side trims because these are just really important de details that makes this setup look really good. And even if I say so myself, this is actually starting to look quite nice at this moment. That was able to come help me, so we at this point disassembled the old cockpit and we ended up at having three generations working with the setup. These are not that heavy, but naturally really difficult to carry alone. And while we had everything in the cockpit room, it was time to put everything together. At this point I also realized that I actually had to lower the dashboard display because it was just too high for comfortable viewing. So that was kind of some couple of hours of extra work, work at this point. For display mounting I actually decided to use my old triple display arm but just create a separate pillar for it that I can attach to the cockpit and to the ceiling so it wouldn't lean. And I really suck at welding but I was able to create a good enough welds so it stays together. Then I just add it in place and add it to this place in place. Then it was time to get back with the details like adding these mounting points to side, sides of the cabinet so I can mount for example joysticks or other accessories into them. Also I decided to add one extra LED strip just for the looks and added the locking mechanisms for the chair. I decided to flush mount my verbal control panels, so for that purpose I designed and 3D printed kind of this flush mount trims that I can add in place with the existing bolts and then just attach the flush mount trim into the surface. For the keyboard and mouse stands I actually used old monitor arms that I had lying around. On the left side I added the keyboard and on the right side I added the mouse. I decided to mount the right hand joystick to the center, it just felt a bit better and it's better suited for Hornet for DCS. So for that purpose I built this mount for the center jo joystick and while I was at it I also built, built this kind of thing for the throttle that I can move it back and forward in the crew and drop it in place when I need it. After attaching the center mount for the joystick, I noticed something that I wasn't kind of expecting. I didn't measure it, but I realized that this might happen. Basically, these joysticks are too close to each other and will collide into each other when in use. But this was kind of a good thing because this forced me to build a kind of separate model for the left hand joystick that I can drop in the groove and again it made everything look so much nicer. Then back with the small details like some cable routing here, adding handles here that I can use to pull myself in when I'm sitting in the chair and a really important detail cup holder. I decided to build a separate panel for the stream deck and this is version 2 so this is basically the front cover for the stream deck and I just couldn't resist adding this small extra panel here. For more nice looking extra details I also decided to add these steel plates under my feet. Just kind of a small detail that looks really nice. For my left hand I'm using a Razer Tartars V2 so I 3D printed this stand for it. And this one is for the trackball that I use to control the top display since it's hooked to a separate computer. Since I still didn't have any specific overlays for the dashboard display, I just created this small trim to go around it just to make it look a bit nicer. 
My first game-specific model for Star Citizen would contain just a basic power control panel. So in this case, I again designed, 3D printed and engraved the panel that I was going to use with it. And it actually came out quite nice. Just for the fun, I also decided to add these status indicators, red and green lights that would flip on and off. And if you want to see how I did this one, you really need to watch this specific episode. After adding the panel in its place, I also added the second panel with the green glowing trackball because, well, it just looks nice. And also, when everything was in place, I hooked the buttons to a Leo Botner BBI64 board that's basically working as the interface so the computer understands my key presses. And then the first module was ready to be dropped in place. Also, as a small detail, I decided to add few 3D printed switch cards here. And they just painted with the silver, silver paint and I'm using super glue to add them in place. To be able to use mouse for longer periods and for example while editing videos or if I would be playing some FPS games, I actually de designed and built this, this mouse tray that I can drop in in place easily and take off quickly if I need to. Now the setup was basically ready. There was still one more detail to add, especially for Star Citizen. The dashboard display, while being great for Flight Simulator and DCS for example, was quite useless for Star Citizen since we couldn't be able to get any gauges on it and it wasn't a touch display. But since I designed that setup to be modular, I could just add some extra overlays and I just happened to have, have all 15.6 inch touchscreen lying around, so I decided to create a separate overlay for Star Citizen, just basically by cutting a hole in the plywood, adding the display in its place, and adding this nice routing for the cables. And I also had this extra tablet lying around, so why, why not go overboard with it? And I decided that that one's center, center pillar, so now I have two two touch displays that I can use for the game class. So after this addition, I'm ready to say that the cockpit is ready for now. But in reality, this sort of setup is never truly ready. So don't forget to subscribe because I have a lot of interesting stuff coming in the future. Thanks for watching and see you next time.